Okay, this is the uh, the fifth and the final video segment that I'm going to be doing in this sequence of uh, uh, sequence of uh, presentations, which deal with the product engineering uh, optim optimizer in Katia. Now, uh, the the previous ones did not deal with finite elements, but here this particular module will actually use the finite element module, uh, which is buried in the in the Katia program. Here's the situation. We have a bent rod like this. So one end of it is clamped, and the other end, the other end over here, uh, is subjected to a downward load of 2,000 newton. Okay. The length, the, the length of the shorter piece is uh, fixed here. It's a fixed value, 70 millimeter. We also know the uh, the, the the fillet radius is 25, but the length of the other piece which is built into the wall is a parameter so what we like to do this is made out of steel by the way what we like to do is to find a, the radius of the cross section and the length l which falls into these intervals in other words subject to these uh, restrictions and uh, such that the, the 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 weight of this bar is uh, a minimum Incidentally, because uh, weight is just mass times uh, gravity constant, the mass of it is minimum, and the maximum one needs to stress in the structure is less than 100 megapascal, and the displacement down maximum down, maximum displacement of the problem, which means basically at the at, at the free end, is less than 0 0.5 millimeter. Okay, so our first task is to create the the model and uh, make uh, R and L parameters so that they can be changed, apply material, and then uh, run an FEA. And uh, then we're gonna go to uh, 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 the uh, pro product uh, uh, engineering optimizer and insist on the condition, on the, on the constraints that the maximum one meter of stress be less than that and displacement be less than 0.5. All right, let's do it. Uh, you're there in the part design. So on a convenient plane, on that vertical plane, I will sketch uh, the cross section of the, the bar, which uh, I'm going to put a dimension on it. And that dimension, uh, let me change this thing to uh, let me change this into radius, okay? And I use the lower end of the design uh, uh, design range, so 15 millimeter, okay? 15 millimeter, uh, 15 millimeters, okay? And then exit. And because I'm going to be doing a rib operation to create the model on this plane on the xy plane i will sketch what seems to be the spine of uh, that uh, uh, the spine of that uh, bent rod so like this like, like so oops let me try again delete this try it again so here go there and i want to turn it to a circle an arc basically, and then so. Okay, let's do some dimensions here. First of all, we want the dimension from uh, the bottom of this, okay, the bottom of that, all the way to the top. This later on is going to be L, but the design number is 150 millimeter, right there, the lower end. So let's make this thing 150. Okay, and this radius of this bent, uh, the bend, which is uh, the fillet basically, I think that's fixed, and it's at 25, 25 millimeter. And finally, the length of this shorter piece is 70 millimeters. That does not change, the radius of the fillet does not change, uh, but exit. Okay, there we are. And then you do a rip operation. Where's the rip? In the, right here. See that where the pad is? 
get paid teacher. There's the rib. Let's try it again. Rib. Uh, profile is that circle. And the uh, center curve or the spine is right there. And we're good. Okay. Uh, let's make this thing out of steel with the material properties, default material properties in Katia. So where is apply material, right? Um, I can find the apply material. Oh, right here. Okay, there's the apply material. Metal, uh, steel on the part, and say OK. All right, that's pretty much it. Let me save this thing. File, save management. Save as desktop, new folder, I'll call it Bentrod, Bentrod optimization, optimization, okay. We then, uh, oh, by the way, while we're here, let's go and create our two parameters. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, R, the other one is uh, L, right? So let's do that right now. Uh, new parameter, oops, not volume, type length. I'll delete that volume in a minute. Parameter of type length, new one. R and the design value was, uh, I think, 15. Yeah, 15. The new one is L, and L was 150 millimeters. Okay, all right. Uh, that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, this volume, I don't need it. It deleted it accidentally. Okay, uh, you know what? Actually, why don't we do one off on mass? Okay, so uh, another parameter on uh, mass because we want the weight or the mass of that thing to be minimum. I'll call it mass, total mass. Total mass. And uh, we just uh, say add a formula, add a formula. Now, let's do this thing. Uh, uh, if you, if you uh, we have to, what we need to do is, uh, let's see now, there's the mass, total mass. Okay, uh, the mass of this thing. We, if it's not there, we have to calculate it actually. Yeah, no problem. So I don't see I don't I don't see mass of this in this uh, database. All right, so we're gonna do that. Okay. All right, so let's do this. Uh, it's equal to uh, the volume of it. How about the volume? And to get the volume, I suggest that we go to uh, parts measure, volume right there. See that? And we select the rib. Where's the rib? There we are. Okay, uh, this is the volume of it, and then we multiply it by the density. Now, to get to density, you select the steel uh, material from here, and it goes here. There is the density. Where's the density? Uh, right there. Yep. This density is actually in unit of uh, uh, unit of uh, uh, as it as it stands as a kilogram per meter cube. Okay, so uh, I suggest that we we have to fix this because uh, this, this this total mass is not going to come out to be as correct correctly. So let me cancel this. Let me cancel that. I say okay. Let me go and change my unit of density to. Uh, uh, Kilogram per millimeter cube or something like that. So tools, options. Okay.
Okay, so uh, let's find the density. Density, turn that into kilogram per millimeter cube. So we have one here. Uh, kilogram per millimeter cube, right, right there. And say okay. And while we are at it, let's find out what the unit of force is because eventually we're going to put Newton. Okay, that's there. And uh, unit of pressure, which is uh, megapascal. Okay, that, that's good. All right, so let's go and click on, uh, double click on total mass. All right. Uh, that will let me add the formula. So f of x, rename parameters. There's a total mass, add the formula, equal to uh, part measure, double click on smart volume, double click on uh, rib, right there, and then multiply it by the correct density. Now, to get to the list from density from here, the easiest way is to click on steel in the tree, and uh, then double click on density. Uh, yep, and then OK, and OK. OK, so this is the weight of, this is this is the mass, not the weight, this is the mass of that piece uh, in kilograms, OK. Yeah, if you want to use the, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's fine, that's fine. OK, so uh, now we're going to go to, uh, Analysis and simulation, generative structure analysis. Static analysis, the default. And let's make the size of this thing a little bit smaller. So expand the tree here. Double click on octree line. We want to use a parabolic element. And the default size right now is, uh, is uh, 10 millimeters. Let me make this thing maybe five millimeter. And then, yep, it's, it's a little bit smaller. That's good. All right, so let's uh, clamp the other end. Clamp this end. That end is fixed. And we apply a total load of, uh, of uh, uh, 2,000 uh, 2, newton downward. So uh, there's your uh, pressure, other one pressure, distributed force on that face in the direction uh, Z minus 2000 Newton. Okay. Oops, where did I, oh, I accidentally took the whole face. I don't want this on the field. Let me cancel this. Okay, try it again. Uh, that force, this face, that's all I want. One face. Okay. And uh, fine. If you don't like the rendering here, you can change it to the third one from the bottom, and it looks like that. If you want to see the mesh incidentally, I'm pretty sure you, you know most of you. Most of you know, because there's a lot of tutorials on finding elements in this uh, <coughs> channel. You're going to see that in a minute. There's the mesh. Okay. Now, to do the rest of the problem, I'm going to deactivate the mesh. Okay. I'm going to save the forward running file, save management. Uh, the analysis is right here. Save as. I'll use the same, uh, in the same, I'll put it in the same folder on default thing. Okay, I'm going to, let's run it. So, uh, uh, where's the run? Here's the thing that says compute. It looks like a calculator. Now, nothing exciting is going to happen. This is going to bend, and it's going to have some displacement, some uh, some MISA stress, so some stress. But you have to run it first. Okay, good. So if you want to look at the displacement down here, see displacement? You want to change the rendering, double-click on this icon, average ISO. I'm not spending time on these because that's really not the focus of... Uh, uh, finite elements uh, for this tutorial. So you can do this. Actually, there's a tutorial in the finite elements section on that same problem. Okay, now uh, this is these are the displacements. See, right now it's 0.7, almost 0.8 uh, 
0.8 millimeter, okay? Uh, now, we want this thing to be less than 0.5, like as you see in the statement of the problem, we want displacement to be less than 0.5. And then if you look at the one meter stress, Uh, it's 127 megapascal. Okay, we actually want it to be less than 100 megapascal. Okay, fine. So let's uh, do the following. Uh, let me let me deactivate uh, deactivate these. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Deactivate this. Now, because I want the maximum mesa stress to be less than some value and the maximum displacement with less than some value, I need some variables which represent those things. And those can be done through sensors. See that right here, sensor, right click, you say uh, global sensor, create global sensor. And you can go and select stuff that you want. For example, I want the maximum displacement right there. This is one of them. Here is one maximum displacement, okay. And I want another one which is uh, where is that uh, global global sensor and maximum MISA stress right there, maximum one MISA stress, okay. Good. I just noticed that there was a, a global entity there called mass. Uh, I want to point out to you one more time that this is not necessarily the, the best way, the most efficient way. So for example, I, I did define a variable called total mass up there, which was totally unnecessary. I could have selected it from the uh, global uh, global uh, thing down here, okay? All right, but that's okay, you just leave it the way it is. Now, uh, if you wanna know what this value is, it's right there. And we want, remember, we want this thing to be late less than something there. And there we are. Now, uh, first of all, let's save. And then we're going to go, and then we're going to go to our Knowledgeware toolbar, uh, Knowledgeware Workbench right there, and product, product Engineering Optimizer. Good. Okay, so uh, optimize. You want something to be minimum. So minimization, select. Now I uh, remember I, in my part, I, I created something called total mass. So I want this thing to be minimum. Now, this is why I could have used it from the global sensor, but that's okay, we didn't do it. Now, uh, and we want uh, this thing to be minimum, right. Now free parameters, there's two of them. There is this thing R, and there is L. Say so, okay. These parameters were created at the part level. That's why you see the part slash to the left of it. Now we we add some uh, we add some range here. For example, we want R to be. Remember, it was between 15 and 25. Look at the statement of the problem. 25. And let's put it increments of uh, one millimeter. And let's look at the displacement. Not the displacement, I'm sorry. What I mean is L, total length L, between 150 and 160. And once again, increments of one millimeter. All right. Now we go to the constraint. Now remember, we have two constraints here. One of them has to do with uh, uh, the the maximum displacement to be less than uh, half a millimeter. So what you do, you select this right there. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, yes, to be less than less than or equal to, uh, what is that, 100 uh, megapascal, 100 MPA, okay, or oh, units are not homogeneous, so well, let's check what we did here, what did we get, 
maximum oh, displacement. I'm sorry, this was the displacement, so no wonder it's not doesn't like it. It's 0 0.5 millimeter, 0.5 mm. Okay. Now another one on the maximum stress to be less than or equal to less than or equal to uh, 100 megapascal. 100 MEA. You say okay. Now notice that this uh, this light is red. That means that currently uh, we are out of whack. We are not in that. Uh, we are not satisfying those constraints. We, we know that. Okay. So then you go to problem. Make sure the uh, the, the checkbox for save optimization there is is checked. And also, if you want to see as this is doing its iteration. Uh, you do it with with visual with, with visualization update. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, the uh, radio box, radio. Your yeah, button is checked. Now I don't know whether this is going to take five minutes or not. So uh, I will leave it. I will make this thing ten minutes. But in all likelihood, it's going to finish before ten minutes. And even if it does take, I'm going to cut the the part of the the video which is. Uh, basically sitting here and making making sure that this thing ends. Okay, so run optimization. Simulated and eating fast and run. It's going to say, well, where where do you want me to save the results? So I'll put the results in the same uh, results in the same uh, directory. Now this Excel file can be used for, for graphing things outside of the CATIA program if you ever want it. This file yeah, it's going to run. It's going to solve the problem many, many times until it uh, come, come, come up with the optimal or uh, and it just did. <laughs> but uh, what happened? You know, uh, something that happens very frequently. Let, let me see. Uh, let me see for a second. Uh, we started with that. So nothing actually changed here. So uh, let me see what we did. Uh, let me say OK. This didn't do anything. I just want to make sure I define my relations because I define parameters, but did I did I say what they were? Uh, let me see for a second. Uh, parameters, yes, yes, and then relations. Ah, notice that I forgot to say what R and L are. So basically, it was totally useless. So let me go to part design. Now define my. R and L. See, the only thing that I did is define total mass. I completely forgot to tell what R and L is compared to the geometry. So let me click on f of x. Yes. Click on the, for example, this uh, this piece. Actually, the sketch. I need the sketch. Where is the sketch? There's two sketches here. One of them was the circle. The other one was for the spine. So if you click on the sketch. There it is, right there. Uh, this thing, uh, this thing, this thing has to be equal to R. So add a formula equal to R. All right. And when it goes to second sketch, that 100, 150 millimeter, that, that length, add a formula, add a formula equal to rename parameter L. So at least we know how our model pertains to or relates to uh, the R and L. Before we didn't, didn't do those were in you know just numbers sitting there. Okay, good. Uh, I'll say okay because I'm not sure what that was saying. But uh, let's go to the optimization. There we are. Everything is everything is the same, yeah. Except that, uh, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and run it now. It 
again, why this is running, I want to remind you what happened. I defined R and L, but I didn't so say how it was related to my model. And I had to go back to the part design and say that length equal to R, L, and that radius series of the sketch equal to R. So let's give it time. And watch this. Uh, uh, let me see if I can. Oh, I can't scroll up, unfortunately. I was going to show you that things will change. The, the, the mass will change. The, the radius will change. This is basically running the problem many, many times until it reaches. You know, see the total mass change, 1.6, whatever. This is why this could take, uh, if you have a very fine model, if you have a lot of constraints, if you know, stuff like that, uh, then this can take very long time. I, my guess is that for us, it's gonna go to four, five, six minutes, and I may not even cut the, cut the video segment, so. That's why fine tuning of those numbers. Remember, there was 250 and uh, step size uh, or time clock uh, limit. I always use the default, but then in complicated problems, things will change. Notice that as it's doing that, the maximum displacement is changing. Remember, the the the, the, the default we want it to be less than half a millimeter. And then the maximum one meter stress is also changing. We want it to be less than 100 megapascal. Initially, it was 127 and I don't know 0.7 millimeter. So uh, let's see. This uh, product engineering. Uh, uh, product uh, engineering optimizer is a very powerful and useful tool that is not, you know, uh, used by many designers because they they're unaware of what it does, and uh, you know the whole purpose of the sequence of uh, uh, videos is to uh, uh, shed some light on it and then uh, do some basic simple problems and you work on it yourself. At this point, we had three three minutes of the walk on. We put a maximum of ten minutes down here in this in this uh, uh, area. You can see. Now remember, I also use pa linear elements, a uh, parabolic element, which means it's going to be <laughs> uh, more time consuming than linear one. Had I used a linear one, the results would have been less accurate, but uh, at least they would have run faster. Okay. We'll see how it goes. There are a very few uh, video tutorials on YouTube that I've seen on this particular topic, and but except for one of them, I think most do not have any sound coming associated with it, so it's, it may be difficult for some people to follow it, but uh, I suggest you, uh, you look at those. That's going very slowly. Uh, in fact, what you can do, of course, you can stop. This is what the purpose of the stop is. You can stop it and fine tune, you know, some of those things. Maybe you go from parabolic element to linear. Maybe you change the uh, change uh, some of the updates and how frequently things have to be updated. Uh, but uh, let's see.
I don't want to stop it, but I'm tempted to stop it and then go and change probably the elements from parabolic to linear. Definitely, it's going to go a lot faster. But uh, let's give it a try. A few more minutes. I'm sure if you uh, if you're bored, just stop it or, or fast forward it on your YouTube channel and uh, uh, get to the point where this ended. How far we are? We are 1.6. It should be, uh, if, you know, we started 1.3s, uh, which was not in the feasible. Uh, it, it was, of course, it was uh, less than less than 1.5. Our, our, sorry, it was uh, less than this, except that. Uh, the stress was high and the displacement was high. Okay, so uh, we'll see. This flag is not changing that much at this point. It's a number of updates without improvement. This is increasing. <laughs> if it reaches 50, it's going to stop. Okay? That's why this number is not changing. Just uh, just be patient. Okay, the, the missile stress is less than 100, that's good, the displacement is less than 0.5, that's good. Yeah. The, 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 the limit on this constraint was less than half a millimeter and this one less than 100 megapascal. Also remember, sometimes you may not uh, you may not reach regardless of uh, what you do. You may not reach the optimal value that you want. But in this problem, you should be able to do it. It's not a hard problem.
Okay. So let's check a few things. First of all, under constraint, they are satisfied. Both of them are satisfied. Now, computational result, let's look at only the ones that actually the constraints were satisfied. It's right there. And let's look at the graph of the, the mass, okay? So, first of all, the slide, what is it that you want to look at? And the math is uh, total mass, okay? And then show me the graph. Okay, look, we started here, and then... Uh, we are it looks like it's being stabilized so in all likelihood 1.6 is uh, is the the smallest the smallest mass mass okay now we can also look at the the uh, the graph for the other two variables uh, namely uh, not we don't want this we want r the radius of the circle and l if these are more or less flat, means that we have pretty much achieved our objective and things are not changing anymore. So let's look at this. Oops. Uh, show graphs. Yeah. You can see, obviously, if, if you sat there and did this thing for a longer time, given eventually it will, you know, turn. This already tells you that R is uh, let's see now this is l what value do we have here uh this one is r and uh, 17 17 17 millimeter and this one is l remember this one we started with 15 and this one is uh l we started with 100 and 150 it's uh, that did not change that much okay so over here for example you see it did change it but eventually it came up with feasible solutions it's not only one solution here you can see that uh, for example uh, uh, 150 millimeter and roughly 17 millimeter radius is going to give you max uh, minimum mass and it will also satisfy the constraints that you want I'm oh, sorry, this took longer than I expected because of, uh, oh, by the way, let me close this thing. And of course, we close that. This last one, it's always that the last last increment is already there. Okay. So uh, show me the part. The part, of course, is going to. Sweet. Okay, there we are. And if you look at the stress, for example, you can you can activate the stress plot and displacement plot, and you activate. Okay, I guess you have to go to the finite element. You can't do it from here. You have to go to finite element module, and now you activate these. Yeah, nothing unexpected. Is going to happen on the screen. So you use a Monisa stress distribution, and the result obviously is less than 100. Okay, good luck. I'm